What do you think the biggest adrenaline rush you ever had with your music is? For us personally. Wow. Yeah. Good God. Bloody hell. Rush. Adrenaline rush. The biggest one ever. Yeah, like God. making music. Hmm. Um, I think when that, that grass cutter blew that stone into our window driving through Serbia, that yeah. was quite an adrenaline rush. Nearly Good fucking answer. killed Joe. Yeah, yeah. He's lucky to still be here. <laughs> we were driving down the road and there was some, in Serbia of all places, there was some people strumming in the middle of the motorway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he clipped something and just by chance when we were going past that 80, it just shattered our window. Jesus. Yeah. We're all happily dozing and we thought we'd been shot at. It turns out it wasn't. It was just a bam. Yeah, a stone. It's the big old hole in the window. Yeah. <laughs> we were like sixteen hundred miles from home. Yeah. That's a cardboard. This fucking window back. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy's uh, breakdown cover didn't work all the way in Serbia either, so we just yeah. had to gaffer it up. Yeah. Literal cardboard and gaffer. How long tape. was left on the tour? When you kind of That's about a week. Yeah. yeah, a week. About a week. At least it's hot. Yeah, well, there is that. There is that. Yeah. There's a lot of tape and a lot of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Music wise, last time I felt like a real adrenaline rush was recording at Rancho de la Luna um, for the first time. That was amazing. Was that for the new stuff that's coming out? For the single that's coming out on Friday, yeah. 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 We did a few other things as well, but that was the first time and that was an amazing experience. Um, so, yeah, mm. that was, yeah, the guys that run that place are amazing. And um, yeah, it was just like a, a really, really good experience all around. So for me personally, I'd say that. How do you feel that environment kind of impacted the development of the song? How did it shift in that time when you went in there with it to kind of put it down? We did actually, we the song kind of wasn't really finished. So we kind of forced it together mm. there. Was that a deliberate move when you were heading in that it wasn't fully together? I don't think we thought about it very much. No, nah, we literally just got given an extra day to do something there. It's like, okay, we've got this thing that's kind of a bit a bit there, let's do it. I think it's the first time we've actually kind of semi-written a song in the studio. Normally we're, we're pretty prepped. But I guess that was the first time that's been like a... Yeah, it was like 80% done, but then we like mm. finished some structural things. And I didn't, you actually did a, Jod did a vocal take. And then you came in the next day and you deleted it and did a different vocal take, but it was a totally different you're just still writing it every day, I think. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty inspiring place to be. Yeah, we had a nice... General. I think we were there for four days and we had a day just in Joshua, like just in the national parks going around, which was fucking great. Very windy. Um, and then we stayed in this place that was like, like an Airbnb in the national park. And it was just in the middle of nowhere, wasn't it? Just What was it called? Do you remember? I can't remember, but it was like a proper like run. Total isolation. Yeah. Wasn't it? it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the name of the episode. Supreme <laughs> Isolation. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no it joke, mate. Was, like, yeah, no joke. We were coming like driving off, like off the, where they call them, the freeways. And it was literally just, there was no road. It was like just, just sand. It was like a, a desert track going up to this total isolation Airbnb mm-hmm. that we booked. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was good. Slightly terrifying. Uh, well, it could, have, it could have been seen in that way, yeah. <laughs> it was like right in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing, was just the middle of a desert. Nothing but the howling coyotes. Yeah. I think Dave, who uh, who runs and owns the studio, being around him was pretty c- cool with the music as well. Like, whether it be... Did any, like, I didn't set up any pedals at any point. Like, yeah. Dave was doing that stuff, which we're not, you know, we've not really had someone do that kind of production. First stuff time that we've before. worked with, I guess, with a producer type. Um, so that was that kind of formed a bit of how the song sounded probably like mm. Dave's preference but all, all around that studio like going back to being a, like an inspiring place like, all around that studio is just like just little memorabilia and trinkets from previous bands that have like either recorded there or just visited like just cool just stuff around, everywhere just like... amazing stuff like they just done when we arrived I think they just just finished the last desert sessions nice or they just released it, so like yeah, they were playing as for the first time. Like these tracks they recorded, and like Dave was saying, oh, like you know, Josh Homme was using that guitar through this amplifier, and Iggy you know, Pop uh, staying in the same yeah, like house yeah. that we were staying in and stuff. Yeah, he said we, we apparently we just missed Iggy Pop by like a day or something like that, which was yeah, but yeah, it was an incredible like spot. Like 
if you couldn't be inspired by being there, then you know you got no hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great spot. I mean, heading into that experience, how long have it been since you recorded music? A couple of years, maybe. This track we're about to put out was recorded more than a year ago. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is, yeah, we've been sat on it for a long time. Yeah. But we're recording like all the time within ourselves. Yeah. Just right. have little demos so, and stuff. So it would have been kind of towards the end of the year, like November, December, when we went and recorded in. Yeah, just before the pandemic, literally. Um, yeah. It's interesting to me because you know if you look at like your debut record, for example, you are kind of it's quite a lot of disparate sounds, but you are kind of picking out these through lines, thematically perhaps to kind of stitch them together. When you're selecting a single to go in and record, how do you choose it? Because you obviously can't really. It's not like you're putting different various things together. If you know what I mean, you don't have anything to hold it together as one track that's kind of standing on its own. What it just depends how you feel, doesn't it? Really, like you know, yeah. depends. Um, like the songs you you play them live or whatever and you kind of know what how you feel doing it and you just pick it that way really like sometimes I have like a list in my head of like sounds that ha we haven't done yet and sometimes that like I want to do a bit of this yeah type of thing mm. does does that make no, sense there's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's no limits on what we what's the next one on what we do that's what I was that's going to be next yeah <laughs> what's on the list well, we're trying to write an album <laughs> I'm gonna just, we'll use the word disco. If you've got quite a large list of stuff that you kind of want to tackle sonically then, what what's kind of kindling one of them? Is, it, do you, is there a certain theme that will kind of allow you to pick one of those out and kind of fit it for that song? Or how do you kind of choose a, a sound from that listening and incorporate it into what you're doing? Uh, whatever results in the least communication. <laughs> 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 and naturally occurs. Uh, Pretty much. There's no. There's uh, as I said. There's no. There's no limits and there's no method to what we do. It. I guess it's just what's what we what we feels. You said it. Yeah. How you feel at the time. At the time. Literally. Yeah. And there's we're lucky that not many people influence our band from the outside, like our manager and stuff. No, don't really care what we do musically. So. Yeah, we're quite. We yeah. We we. It's good in that respect that we 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 have people that just help us do what we want to do. Yeah. Um. And that's, as I said, there's no limits on what we want to do. That's why we have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> At what point did you get to a, a place where you thought you had that team around you? With what you said, like you've got like the supportive network of your management and stuff that don't necessarily interfere with the music, but are still there to kind of help you and, and communicate what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, but we're still we're still very much like like we they work with us, you know, like they're they're a good set of people, but we got there from just doing a lot of it ourselves. I guess like management wise and stuff and eventually we meet people through other people and then you know yeah. some people stick um, but yeah they're a good they're a good bunch that we've got around us now Do you think your attitudes toward making music have kind of changed at all in the last couple of years? What since, we last, since we last heard from you when the record came out almost was the record November 2019? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty yeah, much yeah. Right, pretty much yeah. tears on the pretty much right before yeah yeah um I'm not sure really. I guess the only attitude is that we want to do like more of it and more often. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, we haven't it. obviously haven't. This tour has been great just for just to be able to get back out and do stuff again. So, likewise, we've gone into a studio properly. Like you just want to do it all again and more, don't you? Like, we haven't shared shared yeah. much music either. Yeah. Between yourselves. No. Or like, just in general. Just out of, into the public, I guess. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, like you say, the album was two years ago, so we feel like it's you know it's been a while since we've release anything properly. We've got this one single coming out, but then... Sometimes it feels difficult because I feel like we can we can do anything. I mean, like... Parallels by choice. Yeah, but it's like hard. It's like, what do we, what do we want to do? Because there's so many options. And mm. um, do you think that, what you want to say where your music has changed? You are. Do you think what you want to say where your music has changed? Do I want to say it's changed? Do you think what you want to say with your music has changed? Uh. I apologise for the accent. <laughs> just what you're over the last two years, you mean? Know, just in general, with what you were saying about how you can be paralysed by choice because you don't know what you want to say, kind of, and it can be difficult to decide where you want to go next. It probably, I mean, it probably has changed, but you don't really know when you're doing it. Like, 
I guess one that once we do the next album and that's all recorded, and then if we listen to that and compare it to the first one, then we'll be like, oh yeah, that's kind of what happened in that time. So if you look at a photograph of yourself now compared to two yeah. years ago, you don't notice it day by yeah. day, but when you look back, totally. That's a good way. Um, Perfect. <laughs> in fact, yeah, that was better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, like I say, we just keep doing it, and you don't really notice it. But yeah, after you've done it, then I guess maybe you would, or other people would notice it, but. Whilst you're doing it, you don't. Yeah, I think we all just want to do more. Yeah. And share more music and show so we, what we what we can do and what. It's not just for us, is it? Like everyone's everyone's in the same fucking boat, aren't they? Like, been off for like a long time, not being able to like tour properly and stuff. So like, that's the thing. We're kind of getting came out two years ago, but lockdown happened five months after. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like it's the album tour now. Yeah. To like to me, in yeah. A way. I said, I've said that a couple of times. Even though it's the first tour after two years, it feels like the end of something because we're about to go. You know, do the yeah. next. Yeah, yeah. It kind of feels like this is like us tying up what we did two years ago before what we do next year. To me, we've tightened up a lot of internal stuff as well. I think so. Like, we're ready to do the next thing. Yeah. So. Do you mean in a creative sense or just in the band in general? From that to logistics, like everything. I think you know. Yeah, like, like, um, it has been like a lot of time off, but I'm really looking forward to like next year and what we can do with that mm. that time because there's been a lot of time to yeah, as Jared said, like sort like a lot of stuff out and tighten things down and yeah, I'm looking forward to next year for sure. Have these run? It's interesting. You were saying that you know this feels like the album to now. Has this run of dates impacted your relationship to the songs that were on the record in any way? Play it. It's just been nice to play them. It's maybe kind of because we've it was so long ago recording them, and then obviously we're working on different things over the last year or so. So we hadn't really because we've not been like you know rehearsing that album for the last year because we've been kind of looking forward. So it's been nice to play them again actually. Um, there was also songs we didn't play. Yeah, so like milk, milk and sunlight off the album, like which we like, never really got to play live at the time even. So it's like, yeah. It's, it that's that's, that's been really fun. Like, We're still yeah. getting to know them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did one tour around the album before the pandemic, so it's like it's been really fun to do those songs again. Definitely. Do you think being in a grassroots band in 2021 is more like a tragedy or more like a comedy? <laughs> 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 Comedy man, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> comedy, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, it's, yeah. It's all a fucking laugh, isn't it? I don't. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't really see it being any different to like you know five years ago. We don't get started on the cynicism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nah, yeah. I'd, out of the two, I'd say comedy, mate. Yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> tour's been pretty it's been really funny. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Had a lot of fun. What's the funniest thing that's happened on tour? Harry getting too pissed in hall and thinking it's all right to stand on the table in the back, and Jimmy Mack getting pissed listening off. to Tom, Jer- Tom <laughs> Jones. Listening, yeah, sex bomb. And you know when you're on the school bus and the driver like slams on because everyone stood up, doing that to Harry, and getting fucking really angry. Yeah. And then Harry changing the lyrics to Chop Suey by System of a Down to Get your fucking freedom off the table. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that personally. <laughs> yeah, basically the funniest thing was like, yeah, our little guitar player getting bullied Brilliant. by our tour manager. He deserved it. <laughs> he was on a well time. Harry drank a, a full bottle of red wine and two bottles of Stella in yeah. a 40 minute set. Yeah. He was hydrating himself with red wine and he came off stage and I was like, <clears throat> fresh air's gonna hit. No, nah, that's like, the, whole, the whole, the whole, just like being able to like all of us back and like having a couple of keep, like a couple of I'm people in the crew. <laughs> um, you know, just having people on the road with as well. Like, all of it's just been like a laugh. It's been just like good fun to do again. So, been travelling with nine of us. Uh, yeah, you Which always have nine on stage. No, no, there's only six of us on stage. Ah, but okay. There's nine of us travelling around together. Yeah. Mm. So it's just like yeah, it's nice to get everyone back out on the road again. Like, it's been fun, it's really good fun. Yeah, that seems like quite a nice night trip, Papa. Thank you very much, guys. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Nice one, mate. Did did that seem miserable? No, I don't think so. Good.